in the previous lecture we discussed the quantization of electron orbitals how the orbitals are quantized in the k space and how they are quantized in the real space how these orbital these orbitals are related to the magnetic field and the carrier concentration flux quantization and we also introduced the concept of lando levels and also lando tubes in the three dimension so in this lecture we will look into the density of states filling factor and a interesting transport phenomena that is the subnikov d has effect on subnikov d has oscillation which is an associated phenomena of quantum hall effect and the concept of magnetic lamp so the first question that one would like to ask is how many states are there in each lando level these lando levels are defined in the k space so how many states are possible in the lando level okay now the cartoon here shows the distribution of the states in the absence of any field and the formation of lando levels which are represented by these Lorentzian shaped functions there okay and with the energy quantized n plus 1 by 2 h bar omega so starting with 1 by 2 h bar omega 1 plus 1 by 2 3 by 2 5 by 2 and so on okay and you can see that the energy spread or energy coverage for each lambda level is whatever this coverage for each of these lambda level is h bar omega c okay so the number of states in an area s per unit energy okay is basically the density of states that is the number of, that is per unit energy per unit unit area it is the two dimensional case in three dimensional will be unit volume and this condition is taken b is equal to 0 because that is pretty much fine because the number of states are not going to change okay the number of states are the number of states in the constituent solid which is basically the number of states with the constituent atoms so you cannot the magnetic field cannot change in this situation the number of states is not going to create any new states okay and all the available states are there until this fermi level here okay so that means the two dimensional density of states into the area s okay and you have to multiply by the spin degeneracy 1 by 2 sorry 2 and that is going to give you the number of states in an area s per unit energy and uh, you can use this omega c is eb by m and the uh, number of states in one lando level okay within an area s okay now you have to be a little bit careful here lando level refers to the energy or it's a orbital or it is a collection of states in the k space but that can be scattered at many places in the real space okay so don't confuse the land with lando level and the actual electron orbital okay 
electron orbits in the real space, but Lando level is in the K space. Okay, that concept that you have to be a little bit careful. It's a subtle point here. Now, the number of states in one land level in an area S. Yes. So, this is your spin D generacy, density of states, area S, the same thing here, plus the available energy window of one land level, that is H bar omega C. That is what we discussed here. So, if you, when you work it out, you will get Gs into, you can replace the omega C with Eb by M then you will get a magnetic field term here. So eventually what you are going to get is Gs into E by H into phi. So this E by H is an interesting quantity. It is the magnetic flux quantum. That is what this E by H. So H, H, e, H, H by E. Okay, that is what H by E. So we can re rewrite this thing here as Gs into Gs is spin degeneracy and B into S is going to give you the phi term, the total flux, and phi zero is the H by E term, that is the condensed unit of magnetic flux. So, now in this case, the spin degeneracy is also involved, okay. So, number of spin degenerate state in an area is in each land level. This is for one land level, okay. And you are seeing that that is same in all the land level. It doesn't have any reference to the land level here. Okay. All this says is is in area in an area as yes, in each land level is equal number of flux quantum enclosed in that area. But now you know that flux quantum enclosed between every land level should be same because the area between every land level is same that we have seen in the previous class. All right. So the take home message here is the number of spin degenerate states in an area in each land level is equal to the number of flux quantum enclosed in that area. Okay. Now there is another concept or terminology called filling factor. The filling factor says how many land levels are actually filled at certain field for a given electron density. So the density of states in one Lando level with an energy window Eb by M is given by density of states per unit area into the energy window. Energy window is H bar omega C. And you can replace omega c with Eb by m, then you will get this number 2 Eb by h bar. Okay. And this 2 here stands for the spin degeneracy. Okay. Now, in this case, we have assumed that the Seaman splitting is not appreciable. So we multiply it by 2. But if the field is very high, you don't need to consider this too. Then the splitting, spin splitting of the land levels also one need to consider. So for a given electron density Ns, the number of land levels occupied is given by the electron density Ns divided by the number of states in each land level at a given B field. And this quantity is called filling factor generally represented by the letter nu. Just for example, if you have the B field to Tesla with an NS 5 times 10 to the power 11 per centimeter square, then when you work out this number, what you will get is 5.2. What that means is there are 5 land levels fully occupied and the 6 land level is partially occupied. That's what it means. Okay. So, we can also say that the filling factor is inversely proportional to magnetic field. This is also easy to see because when you increase the field, the Lando level area will increase. 
I mean the circum the the number of states in that lander level also will increase. What that means filling factor will decrease. So when you increase the B field, the lander levels will expand, making more and more states inside each lander level. Okay. So for a constant um, charge concentration ns the states in each lander will increase and the filling factor will decrease okay now let us inspect this situation in a little bit more detail what is the charge or what is electron dynamics that one would observe when you increase the b field so here these cartoons show the density of states or how the states are distributed when you change the magnetic field. So when there is no B field, when B equals 0, there are no random levels, it's a continuum distribution and EF is the Fermi level which I have noted by the dashed circle. And I'm also assuming that this is a non-zero temperature, though it's a low temperature, but still there is a small width. So that is why I put this Fermi level in this small but thin but broader region. Okay. Now when you increase the B field, suddenly these states will condense onto circles. Those are the lander levels. Okay. But now the number of lander levels below the Fermi level is defined by the B field. Fermi level is not going to change. That is defined by the total number of electrons in the system and the expression we have derived in one of the initial lectures. So this dotted circle that is the Fermi level or the Fermi sphere in 3D, that is going to remain same that will be the same, that's not going to change. But what is going to happen is the area of the is the of this lander level that is proportional to B field, B. So that is going to expand each of them. They will expand isotropically, but the Fermi level is going to be there, it's not going to change. So what's going to happen is they will expand, expand and they will escape or pass through the Fermi surface one by one. So now this is going to create some very interesting situation. I have kind of uh, put the same picture here. So you have B is equal to 0, the continuum distribution and the moment V is not equal to 0, you have these lander levels. Each of these are actually lander levels, okay? Starting outermost, then going, going inwards, okay? Now, the spacing between the lander level and the circumference and the radius of this lander, this lander level or these circles is proportional to B as given by this equation, okay? Now, what's going to happen is, it's not the radius, but you have to understand it is the area, okay? Area is proportional to it. So, the number of lander levels below the Fermi level, that is this line here, this is the Fermi level, that depends on the B field. So, as you increase the B field, this will expand and they will escape the Fermi level one by one. Now this is outside, this is going out. So you have, you started with three states here, right? In this case, you have three states, then two and a half states, and then two states. So as you increase the B field, as we discussed in the previous slide, the filling factor will, be, filling factor will change, it will reduce, and the number of lander levels also will reduce. But now, since, but the circumference and the area of each lander level will increase as we increase the B field. 
So whatever the states that has been lost below the Fermi level, because the land level has passed through the Fermi level as a result of the a result of increase in the bay field. But equal number of states will be made available below the Fermi level because by, by because of the expanded, because of the presence of the expanded land levels. So what that means is number of states are not going to change. Number of states will be there. But the moment the land level pass through the Fermi level, as shown here, the electrons in that land level in that particular land level need to jump back because above the Fermi level they cannot exist. So the moment this goes through here, all the electrons which were here now will go back here, it will jump back here the moment it is passed through. It actually can go back here because now there are more states in this case compared to the state because this area of this land level is now more. The area is this is this area is actually increasing as we increase the B field. So there are more states or more space for the electrons to, to jump back from here to here. So this action of the electron suddenly you know transitioning from a higher land level to a lower land level, the moment it passed through the a for me surface is going to reflect in all the physical properties of the system and this is going to give you oscillative behavior in various physical properties and the oscillations in magnetic field is referred as the has van alphen effect that is widely used for mapping the fermi level okay that is that is something which we are not going to discuss but the oscillation in the resistance or resistivity is called subnikov has effect that we will discuss now okay so the nutshell in nutshell what is what we have discussed now is when you ram the b field the landers will expand the fermi level of course will remain there then the lander when the lander will pass through the fermi level as a result of increasing the b field all those electrons in that particular land level will jump back to the one below. Okay, but remember the land level below the Fermi level is also now expanded and got enough space to 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 have those electrons sit there. Okay, so that is the take home message now. All right. Now let us briefly look at the Subnikov D has oscillation subnikov d has effect this is nothing but oscillations in the resistivity or conductivity of the material as a function of b field discovered by d has and subnikov in 1930 they observed in the bismuth single ultra pure bismuth single crystals and these oscillations you can see even in this landmark nobel prize winning experiment conducted by class 1 cleansing tube so here, there are many curves in this um, graph. If you look at this um, red colored curve, you can see that that he calls as resistance at B is equal to whatever this high field, 19.8 Tesla. And other resistance is called, he calls Hall resistance. So we are not referring to the Hall resistance, we are referring to the resistance of B field. That is actually the resistance along the direction we call generally called rxx is along the direction of applied b field that is the um, uh, linear resistance or rxx okay now that is what is plotted here as the red curve and you can see all those red curves has an oscillatory behavior and it actually goes to pretty low value in resistance okay And that is what we call the Stubnikov D has oscillation. This is for the silicon MOSFET as a function of gate voltage. And this is for a gallium arsenide device where you can see this curve, there are oscillations. 
like this here also okay that is the rxx part which is nothing but vxx divided by the current through it so here is what you are seeing is an oscillation the vxx which is an oscillation the rxx and the red curve is the rxy that is a hall for transverse component of the resistance which we will discuss in the next class okay and this is in a gallium arsenide aluminum gallium arsenide two dimensional electronic gas sample now we know that the filling fraction nu is periodic in 1 by b okay ns 2e by h into 1 by b is actually periodic in 1 by b okay so this is again how the landau levels are going to we have when you increase the B field. So you have no Landau levels, a continuum state, then you have three Landau levels, two and a half ish, because this is about to go out of the Fermi level, and then two, after this is left, this two, and so on. Then finally you'll get one, okay, and so on, like that. So now let us look at the concept of resistance philosophically. What it means is it is the impedance or the opposition offered to the forward propagation of the electrons. That is what is resistance. What that means is resistance means there is a component or there is a, there is a momentum component which makes electron scatter back. So it is a backscattering component. When you say backscattering or scattering, it actually need states for that purpose. Now you will see very soon in the next class that these Landau levels are actually, these Landau levels correspond to states which propagate only in one direction. The action of applying magnetic field is going to basically remove the time reversal and you cannot have the electron coming back that you will see in a minute because you have to define a few more concepts to reach that point but just to understand this oscillatory behavior if you don't have states at the Fermi level you cannot backscatter in this case you have states at the Fermi level because a continuum state they can actually backscatter and you will get a resistance. But here the states are condensed onto these Landau levels and this Landau level is outside. So these states are not accessible. This Landau level is full. So there are no states available for backscatter because those are already full. What that means is there are no states to backscatter. That means the resistance R access component will be zero. But here when the Landau level will pass through, then these half the there are states so of course given the broadening of the temperature that is why you get broadening of all these uh, Landau levels that is basically caused by the broadening of temperature mostly so then you have states here okay now again no states no resistance here you have states for the electrons to backscatter then you have persistence so all these dips of negligible resistance actually it should be zero but when you measure it it actually is going to be the noise level or noise floor of your or the of the instrument the preamplifier that you are using to measure okay so Whenever there are states, you will measure resistance. That is where you are going to get, that is when you are going to get these peaks. Okay. And this splitting is because of the spin splitting. Okay. okay. Now, whenever you have no states, that means in this configuration or in this configuration, here or here, there are no states at the Fermi level to backscatter, so no resistance. That's what is happening here also. Okay. And this is for a graphene sample, the reference is here. 
when you measure the resistance the linear resistance or rxx that is if you put if you pump current from here to here and you are measuring the resistance between any two probes in the direction of propagation of the current then you will measure you will measure this black curve here the, which has an oscillation oscillative behavior okay so these oscillations are called Shubnikov D has oscillations. Now let us look into the Shubnikov D has oscillations a little bit more in detail and you will realize that this is a highly important technically and for material characterization. So, we have the filling factor given by this formula for a given electron density Ns and a given B field, that is the number of Landau levels occupied. And now I have snapshots of the Landau levels for two different B fields, B1 and B2, okay, where B1 is less than B2. And this corresponds to a filling factor nu1, where you have three Landau levels below the Fermi level, and this corresponds to filling factor nu2, where you have a two Landau levels below the Fermi level. Fermi level is marked here. Okay. Now, so as we know, these points correspond to points of resistance or points of no resistance or negligible resistance that is basically the dips in this rxx or vxx oscillation okay now from this filling factor equation this refers to situations where the filling factor differed by 1 so that means ns by 2 eb1 that will have higher filling factor 3 this will be a higher filling factor 2 as per this picture the difference will be 1. So from that you can rearrange the terms and get a condition for the carrier concentration n, n is something which is constant which we are not varying, we will get that is 2e by h divided by delta of 1 by p. Okay. So by looking at the dips in this oscillation, you can calculate the carrier concentration directly using this formula. Ns is 2e by h delta of 1 by b. Okay. And these oscillations, when you plot in 1 by b, it will be periodic. This is not periodic because this is plotted versus b, the magnetic field. If you plot in 1 by b, then these oscillations will be periodic. So, Shubnikov D has effect or in short people also call it SDH effect, SDH oscillation is widely used for the determination of carrier concentration in two dimensional systems. Okay. Now, let us close today's um, lecture by briefly mentioning another concept that is the magnetic length and its connection to the cyclotron radius. So we know the area of the state delta S is h by eb or phi 0 by eb in real space. Okay. This we have done before. Okay. Now the classical cyclotron radius is given by the momentum h bar k is e into r cross b okay force is e into b cross b so momentum is e into r cross b from that we can get the cyclotron radius rc is mvn that is the momentum this is the classical term okay divided by eb and if you equate this to the energy quantum mechanical energy, you can make a connection between these two, okay, where omega is Eb by m, 
So you can rearrange it and what you will get is RC is square root of 2n plus 1 h bar by eb. Okay, that's the radius, cyclotron radius, which is 2n plus 1 into LB, where LB is h bar by eb is defined the magnetic length. So magnetic length is something where that where the spread of that electron the physical dimension were the spread of each state in real space okay then physical dimension of the spread of each state okay so we know that each state is represented by something like this where that refers to the cyclotron motion of the electron and um, of course the spread will in real space okay this spread will be inversely proportional to b okay and in k space it will go it will be more because you can say that when the field is low is a larger radius when the field is less you start you know it will radius will start increasing and this density of these states has been also visualized by tunneling spectroscopy techniques by landmark experiment and what they have seen is they have seen the spread or the residue of states using the tunneling experiment they measured for various lando levels this for lowest lando level then you can see the next one you can see this larger the next one there are three lando levels now 0 1 and 2 so you can see 1 2 3 there are three of them the largest one here then the next one is even larger okay so this is this has been measured experimentally also this spread of these lander levels this is the density this is the mapping of the density of states by tunneling experiment okay and as you can also see here there are no overlap between different lander levels because these are energy eigen states for the hamiltonian which are orthogonal so they don't cross each other there is no overlap so that's what you are seeing here also you have all the four states are here but there is no overlap between the four states that also you can see these are orthogonal states that you know from the physics side but that is also what is seen when these um, states are probed by tunneling microscopy technique so so far what we have seen is the number of states, the filling factor, the magnetic length, and the oscillations in the physical properties of, of the material as a function of B field. That is what we looked in, that is what we looked into in this lecture. And the next lecture, we will address the transport characteristics directly. That is the quantum Hall effect, and we also will revisit the Shubnikov Dehas oscillations too.